again, and we are about to start our first adjusting entry video. But before we actually go into how to do adjusting entries, I want to give you a set of rules that will help you. There are three. Number one, the adjusting entries are made right before the financial statements are published. So what that essentially means is that on December 31st, when everybody else is out celebrating New Year's Eve and toasting with champagne, the accountants are sitting there in a dark room feeling sorry for themselves making adjusting entries because all the financial statements are done at the, as of December 31st, aren't they? Well, it's not actually quite true. They're put out after December 31st, but all the information is as of that day. Although there are also quarterly statements and monthly statements made as well. No matter when the financial statements are going to be published, the adjusting entries are made as part of getting them ready to be published. That's the only time they're ever done. They're, they're tweaks to the system. So right before publishing the financial statements. The second rule is that you will never, ever, ever have cash as one of the accounts adjusted. Never, ever, ever do I want to see cash as part of one of your adjusting entries. It is not affected, and you'll see why soon enough. Okay, and the third rule and last rule is that it's, it's more of a hint than anything. One account will be an income statement account. So essentially, you will use a revenue or an expense. And the other one will be a balance sheet account that you adjust in the same, trend, same adjusting entry. So one account is balance sheet. So it's going to be an asset or a liability. So essentially, you could debit an expense and credit a liability as an example of an adjusting entry, or you could credit a revenue and debit an asset, something along those lines. So let's see how this all works. Let's do some examples. Okay, back to the standard balance sheet equation. Assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. Let me give you an example of hmm, insurance that's paid ahead of time. In another example that I used, we had, I think, prepaid rent. I'm going to use prepaid insurance this time. It's an asset. So let's say we bought $2,400 of insurance with cash. That's supposed to last for one year. We pay $200 a month insurance on whatever. It doesn't really matter on what on our company boat. <laughs> so we had to pay cash for that. So our cash would have gone down. So it's a credit of 2400 And our insurance, prepaid insurance, what did I tell you it's like? Yes, it's like a gift card. So we now have a gift card to use up prepaid insurance worth $2,400. Now let's say that we bought this on the 1st of September. It's, worth, it's one year worth of insurance, but we bought it on 1 September. Hmm. We publish our financial statements on December 31st. How many months is that? All of September, October, November, and December. Four months worth. So if we publish the financial statement saying that we have an asset that's worth $2,400, is that really true on December 31st? No, it is not. We've used up four months worth of insurance by December 31st. Now, did any cash change hands? No, that changed hands way back when we bought the insurance. That was a full-fledged transaction, cash for prepaid insurance. 
But now it's just an adjusting entry. We're going to tweak it. So we know we have to take out, we say $2,400 is a year's worth of insurance. So that means $200 a month. We used up four months. So we used up $800 worth of prepaid insurance. So we're going to credit that. Our prepaid insurance went down by $800 worth of insurance. Well, we credited something. We're going to need to debit something. Well, we just credited an asset. That's a balance sheet account. We know we're going to have to go to an income statement account now. So over here under equity is my income statements account, accounts of revenues and expenses. So guess what? Remember, Expenses are the exception to the rule that everything on the right-hand side of the equal sign, to increase it, gets credited. No, exceptions get, the expenses are the exception, so they get debited, and that works out great. So we are going to cre uh, debit, I'm sorry, debit insurance expense. Voila. That is our adjusting entry to debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance. So let's try another one. All right. Let's say we have wages payable, which is a liability. Wages payable. And it's the it's December 31st and let's say we have Every two weeks, we pay $10,000 in wages to our employees. But a week ago, we paid them. So only one week has gone by between, what would it be, December 31st minus 7, before the 24th of December, when we last paid them, all 10,000 wages payable were zero. They've worked a week since they were last paid. So we owe half of that, don't we? We owe, on December 31st, $5,000. That's not going to show there. Wages payable is going to look at like zero once we paid them. But now, at the end of the year, we know that they've earned 5000 half of a paycheck worth half of a, a pay period's worth. So we have to reflect it, that 5000 of the money we're hanging on to right now isn't ours anymore. It belongs to our employees. So we have to put a credit of $5,000 in wages payable. Guess what? We need to debit something. And sure enough, it's going to be an expense again, wages expense. You just give it pretty much the same name. Wages expense is going to be debited $5,000. So, so far, so good. So now you saw two, an asset going to expense and a liability getting expensed. Let's try another liability. Let's say we have unearned revenue. Somebody paid us in advance to do a job. Um... Mm, we back to my lemonade company biz, uh, example that we used in another video where we also do lemonade tastings. We send someone out to somebody's house and they show up with all different kinds of lemonade and they give a little presentation and people get to taste the lemonade and we bill them for that. But before we ever do it, they have to pay. So unearned revenue, let's say they paid us, it's a liability, they paid us $1,000 to do that. So we had cash of 1000 I'm going to add that to a debit to cash and a credit to unearned revenue. But now we look at the, adjust, we look at the fact that, oh my gosh, we went and did that. We went and earned our money. We did the lemonade tasting. We have to close that out. By debiting unearned revenue and moving it to actual revenue. So we're going to debit unearned and credit 
actual revenue. Okay, yet another one. This one's a little interesting. It has a little trick to it. It's office supplies. So let's say earlier in the year we bought with cash, I'm not going to show that transaction, some office supplies worth uh, $600 of office supplies. Well, every time somebody grabs a pencil out of the supply closet, nobody's going to run to the books and say, oh my gosh, uh, 10 cents, take credit office supplies for 10 cents. They're not going to do that. That'd be crazy. So how do you really do it? At the end of the period, someone goes and inventories the closet, don't they? And they say, oh my, we only have $200 of office supplies left. Well, guess what? You know that there's only 200 Yes, yeah, started with 600 So how much did you use up? You would put 400 right there. You'd credit office supplies for 400 at the end of the period. And guess what? You would debit office supplies expense or just office, I'm sorry, or just supplies expense for $400. There's another one. I will, the, what I told you is that there's something a little tricky about this. Some problems will say that you used up $400 worth of office supplies. They give you that number. Well, if that's what you used up, that's what you expense. Other problems will say you did an inventory and found out you only have $200 left. You then have to calculate that number. You don't want to take the 200 and expense that. That would be a mistake and wrong. So make sure you read very carefully. Are they giving you the ending balance in office supplies or the amount used up? So that's a little trick that uh, they just love to use on you in accounting. Read those carefully. Okay, let's say we know that on Dece nobody pays their taxes on December 31st. But December 31st is when you actually look at what you owe. So taxes, you're going to look and say, oh my gosh, I owe $20,000 in taxes payable. So you're just going to enter that there. But guess what? Even though you haven't paid it, you get to do ta you get to expense it. It is a business call cost of doing business for that tax year and you would debit $20,000. You expense it that year. The next year when you actually pay the cash you would just debit taxes payable and credit cash over here. So these two. Take it out of cash and take it out of your taxes. So the liability goes away and your cash goes away too when you actually pay. But you expense it at the end of the year. Okay, so I've now shown you all every single which way I can think of to do adjusting entries except for a very important one called depreciation. That's in the next video. See you in another minute.